Well, I'm talking with Dr. Allison Van Enenam, who is a geneticist and animal scientist at the University of California, and we're at the NIAA conference and talking about biotechnology and some of the some of the potential benefits and, and impacts that biotechnology can have in, in animal ag agriculture specifically, and uh, wanted first to talk about some of the some of the impacts that we've already seen, some of the, the effects and the, the benefits that we've seen from some various types of biotechnology in the past, then we'll move on to some you know, more future looking uh, benefits. Sure, so biotechnology in its general sense is just applying technology to biology. And I think in that definition, pretty much anybody that works in animal agriculture is using biotechnology. Um, and if we look as a geneticist historically at the developments we've been able to do and the progress we've made through traditional biotechnologies like artificial insemination for example has had tremendous impact on the genetic progress we've been able to make by enabling us to very widely use the very best sires in the dairy uh, industry for example has uh, really tremendously increased the milk yield per cow and that's had knock-on benefits of increasing the sustainability of the industry per kilogram or per pound of milk that's produced. And we've seen some of these and you've talked about some that, that are in the reproductive areas such as using sex semen mm -hmm. and some of the potential there but um, looking maybe a little bit more out ahead we talked uh, about some of the animal health applications and uh, potentials for breeding some uh, some animal health resistance into into animals. Right, uh, there's a couple of different options where biotechnology might play a role in animal health applications in the future. One of them um, being a project that I'm familiar with which is um, trying to select for animals that are more um, uh, resistant or less susceptible to bovine respiratory disease, so trying to identify within the animal's genome itself uh, loci or, or genes that are associated with them being less likely to get sick. But there's other applications that I think biotech is going to enable. Uh, recombinant vaccines for various uh, diseases are going to be derived out of biotech and perhaps as excitingly in the future I think the, the, the tremendous advances in sequencing capabilities are really going to I think revolutionise um, um, veterinary diagnostics and our ability to identify which organisms are associated with disease and, and basically with a one sample um, have a look and see what organisms are associated with disease, what antibiotic resistance susceptibility genes do they have in there um, and all of the different virulence factors that will enable us to do a better job managing disease and maybe even monitoring for disease for, in a feedlot for example to anticipate where problems might be coming down the road and so I think that's an area that's going to undergo explosive growth as a result of the decreased cost of sequencing. I'd imagine there'd be opportunities to maybe more rapidly respond with the vaccines that to, to respond to a particular type of animal disease challenge. Certainly, so through biotechnology and especially, specifically recombinant um, DNA technology, you could potentially um, develop a, a vaccine in a more rapid fashion that would be targeted to a specific uh, organism. And of course, we have in the long run potentially also the, the potential to develop genetically engineered animals um, that are more resistant to disease um, or, or other modifications. We're getting increasingly sophisticated with the, what we can do from a genetic uh, modification standpoint and we can actually go in and actually do individual nucleotide edits of the genome that would enable us to selectively turn on or off certain genes and once we know which genes are associated with disease we might turn certain ones on, turn certain ones off. We might turn others on, off that are associated with the development of horns, for example, and develop polled animals. So really that the information we're getting from genomics is going to enable us to do um, tremendous targeting and really uh, refine our genetic approaches to managing our animals, both from a disease perspective, but also from a productivity perspective.